All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to uh, go start the discussion on section 4-2. Uh, this is called the addition rules for probability. I guess the, the overview I would give on this concept is that it, it's very simple to be thinking about uh, a single event, but many times we're interested in the probability of two or more events, two events, three events, what have you. And the concept is that uh, if you are thinking about two or more events, you have to know how to do the calculation, and that's based on set theory. So we're going to talk about sets, and we're going to talk about Venn diagrams, which you may or may not have seen before. But if you think about it for a little bit, I'm sure you'll find it not that difficult. Okay, so here, here's the example the author is using. He's talking about, give me one second here. So we're, uh, we're going to use an example that we can all understand. It's not particularly interesting, but again, these are examples merely to help us understand the concepts. The example he's using is you have a large political gathering of some sort, and you want to know uh, what is the, for a person that is selected at random, what is the probability that the person is a female or is a Republican? Okay, so that's an easy concept for our, to, to get our arms around. Now, the reason we have to say at random, this language here, when we say at random, what we mean by that is that every single person in the political gathering has an equal opportunity to be chosen and to be selected. If, if if that's not true for something, then these rules don't apply. So you're going to see this all the time that we say that the, the person has to be picked at random or the event has to be, the, uh, the occurrence has to be at random. Okay, now I, I just used the word occurrence, and that's probably not the best word to use. In order for us to be consistent, I want to use the same language that the author used. So uh, when we were back in 4-1, we talked about a probability experiment is a chance process that leads to a well-defined result, and we call that an outcome. So an outcome is the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. So what I should have just said is that the random outcome is, uh, what we mean by that is the person that you select it, it, everybody has an equal chance of being selected. So let's try to be, I'll try to be consistent in my language, and I'll try to use the author's language of an outcome being the result of a single trial of a probability experiment. So the, here's the experiment. You just reach out there and you pick somebody. That's your experiment. The outcome is, you know, is they or is they not a female? Is they or is they not a Republican? And so forth. Okay, so in this case, there are pre po three possibilities that we need to consider. The person could be a female, the person is a Republican, the person is both a female and a Republican. So what we're dealing with here is we're saying, well, listen, you, you pick somebody at random, you want to know, are they a female or a Republican? So how is it that you have a success? You have a success if the person is a female, that's a success, but that person may be a, a Democrat or maybe Peace and Freedom Party. But that there's still a success because the requirement up here is that it's a female or a Republican. So the other way of getting a success is that the person is a Republican. Okay, so you could pick a man that's a Republican. The third uh, way of getting a success is that you have where the uh, the person that you pick is both female and a Republican. Okay, so it makes sense, right? So we, here's another example. Same gathering. There's Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. If a person is selected at random, what's the probability that the person is a Democrat or an Independent? So again, to be successful, to be successful, if you pick a Democrat, it's successful. If you pick an Independent, it's successful. So I, I challenge or I don't, don't like this language here. Um, where it says there are only two possibilities. See, that, that can be confusing. When you pick somebody at random, it can be, uh, it, 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 these aren't the only two possibilities. These are the only two possibilities to have a success. So I think it's better to think about this in terms of how are you successful? You're successful if you pick a Democrat or if you pick an independent. But it, what's the distinction then? This example compared to this example, where it, where it, 
In this example, you can have somebody that's a female and a Republican. They could be both. Over here on this one, you, you cannot have somebody that's a Democrat and is an independent. So that's a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see here in just a minute. So that's what he's talking about here. You can't, you can't have, uh, well, I'll let you read that for yourself. Okay. Now, what do we, what do we call this situation? When we say that it, it is one or the other, you're either a Democrat or an independent, we say that the, the events are said to be mutually exclusive. In other words, you cannot be both a Democrat and an independent. So they are disjoint. Two events are mutually exclusive or disjoint events if they cannot both occur at the same time. They, you cannot have outcomes in common. Okay, so here's another example, getting a four and a six. They're mutually exclusive, okay? You can't have a card that's both four and six. But on the other hand, you can get a four and uh, and a heart. That's fine because you can get a four of hearts. So there is, it, it, it's perfectly okay. You're not saying that they're disjoint. So getting a four and getting a heart are not mutually disjoint. So here's some examples here. I'll let you look, take a look at these. Uh, how about just grab one at random here? You roll a die, you get an odd number. Okay, rolling a die and getting a number less than three. Are these two events disjoint? No, of course not, because you can get an odd number. You can get a one, and that one is also less than three. So C, the answer is they're not mutually exclusive. They're not disjoint. Okay, so there's an example. So the face cards, the, the cards are also good examples. It's something we can all understand. They're, they are good examples to, just to help us understand what's going on. Okay, so we have addition rules. So the probability of two or more events, so something like rolling a die and getting an odd number and getting a number under three, uh, picking a card and getting a face card and getting a heart, those are uh, the, the two events that we're talking about. There's two different rules. See, we call them addition rules. Addition rule one and addition rule uh, two. I think there's only two. Any of that. Okay. So let's look at this notation here. If they are mutually exclusive, the probability that A or B will occur. So here we go. A or B. So Republican, or I'm sorry, Republican and, <clears throat> and Democrat. So you probably getting a Republican or a Democrat. They're mutually exclusive. So what do you do? You find the probability of the first one plus the probability of the second one. And that, that makes abundant sense if you look at it into, uh, using a Venn diagram. The Venn diagram, all that does is help us understand visually. As human beings, most of us can understand things uh, better if, if we see it visually. So here it is. Rule number one, if they're mutually exclusive. Probability of a Republican, probability of a Democrat, they are mutually exclusive. So what do we do? We just add up the the two uh, events. <clears throat> okay, now it, it's probably worth mentioning here. Now, this the, the the big square here, the yellow square. That's the entire universe. That's the total uh, sample space. Okay, there's it's not just uh, Republicans and Democrats or Republicans and Independents. There's plenty of other parties out there. Peace and Freedom Party. Uh, the Green Party, the American Communist Party. There's all kinds of parties out there. So that's why we have this other space out here that's not uh, included in A and B. Okay, so endangered species. Here's an example that we can talk about here. There's uh, all these different uh, species. Okay, there's birds and there's fish. Well, you're either a bird or you're a fish. You're not. You're not going to be both. So uh, you can see how it, they're disjoint. So I'll let you take a look at that. But I hope, hopefully that's very very clear. Okay, look at these other examples here. Okay, it's always going to be basically the same idea. Uh, we're always talking about uh, if they're mutually exclusive, you you merely add the probabilities up. Okay, so now. We, we, the probability rules can be extended to three or more events. Is there any reason why we can't have three or more? Of course not. We can have three or more. No problem whatsoever. The rule is exactly the same. You just add up. If they're mutually exclusive, if they're disjoint, you just add up the probabilities. Okay? All right. So now, addition rule number two. What if they are not 
mutually exclusive. Okay, so you have this overlap. Well, I think it's helpful to look at the cartoon here, the Venn diagram first. So A and B. So let's say A is female, B is Republican. Well, right here in the middle, right where they intersect, you have a female Republican. Uh, so these are these are females. These are Republicans. They intersect uh, out here outside of A and B. What do we have? We have all the males. We have all of the, you know, uh, peace and freedom guys and so forth. OK, so you can see uh, this gives us an idea of uh, this Venn diagram helps us visualize this stuff. So what's the rule? Probability of A or B, so it's one or the other, female or Republican, well, it's the probability of being a female plus the probability of being a Republican, but then you subtract off this probability of A and B. Now, a lot of times people say, well, why do you subtract it off? Well, the, the, the concept is all of these people in the A set, in this the female set, okay, includes these people right here. These are all the Republicans. Well, you certainly want to count them at least once, but you don't want to count them twice. So if you just did, if you just said probability of A plus probability of B, you'd be counting these people in here twice. So you, what you do is you take away uh, one of them, not, 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 uh, so let's say just for example, probability of A, that's a certain probability probability of B, well, then you take away the probability of A or B that, you know, this, or A and B, excuse me, the A and B right in there, you take it away to avoid counting it twice. So here's an example. A single card is drawn, okay, is either a nine or a diamond. So it's a nine or a diamond. So probability of being a nine plus the probability of being a diamond, and you subtract the nine of diamonds because you wouldn't want to well, you wouldn't want to count it twice. The, the nine is counted over here as a four. The, 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 the nine of diamonds is counted over here as one of the diamonds, right? So you have to subtract away where it, it, you're counting it again. You're counting the, the, you wouldn't want to count the nine of diamonds again. Okay, so this is all basically the same idea. So I'll let you read that. Driving while intoxicated. I did want to point out there is an error in the book. Give me one second and I'll get to it. Okay, here it is. This is, so the, the concept is very simple here. Let's just get to it right up here in the blue. Okay, probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B, and then you subtract away the overlap, the, the intersection, okay? Well, the same concept applies if you have three of them, right? I mean, why wouldn't you be able to do it? You, of course you can do it. So the probability of A or B or C is the probability of A plus the probability of C plus the probability, I said that wrong, probability of A plus probability of B plus, plus the probability of C, but then you take away the, the overlap. So where is it overlapping? Where are we uh, intersecting? Well, A and B, that's a, A and B, that's an intersection. We take that away. A and C, that's an intersection. B and C, that's that's an intersection, but we also intersect. Uh, we intersect right here, A and B and C. So we want to take that away. There's a, a typographical error here. He has it as plus. So that's just an error. Okay. So here's a summary. When the two events are mutually exclusive, we use addition rule one. If they're disjoint, we use uh, rule one. If they're not mutually exclusive, we use uh, the addition rule right here, the two, okay? All right, so that wraps up for one. Uh, I strongly urge you, look at the uh, applying the concepts. They're very, very useful. Work your way through them. And uh, that concludes this video.